Kia ora and welcome to video 23 in the series Delightful Differentiation. We're on the home stretch now, a few more videos, the last one being Friday, video number 25, and that will cap off a great series. Uh, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce a former student of mine, George, uh, to YouTube for the recording. Uh, George is actually the first student here that is not ex Mount Albert Grammar. Uh, George, in fact, went to Dilworth. Dilworth is the school I went to, and I've also been in the hostel there for a number of years. Uh, so I first met George, I think, back in 2020, when he was studying scholarship calculus. Uh, during the lockdown years, it was a very interesting vibe. Uh, we would meet uh, him and a couple of other students on Google Meet, and we would meet pretty much every week during lockdown. George was successful at attaining scholarship. Um, so he's off at university now, studying um, a whole heap of stuff that I don't really understand anymore, uh, including, of course, some maths. Okay, the problem that George will go through, I don't know whether um, it's the fact that the Dilworth guys in the hostel they just love their food, that he picked this question, who knows? Uh, but apparently I love soup. Um, my favourite, well, I've got a few favourites to be fair, pea and ham's pretty good, um, creamy chicken's really good. And I used to hate pumpkin, but I actually kind of kind of liking a creamy pumpkin soup at the moment with the cold winter. Anyways, too much information. Mr W loves soup. His bowl can be modelled by a frustum with a radii 10 centimetres, 25 centimetres, that's the base and the top radii, and then a height of 15 centimetres. If he bowls, if he bowls, I'm a cricketer, if he fills his bowl at a rate of 12 centimetres cubed per second, at what rate is the radius of the soup's surface increasing when the soup is 9 centimetres deep? So it's a typical related rates problem. However, it is at the harder end of the scale due to the fact that there's a number of variables going on and the equations that you need to derive to relate the variables together um, aren't, aren't your typical NCA level three equations. So all the best with this problem, and I hope you enjoy George's solution. Hey guys, I'm George. I'm an ex-student of Mark Warden. Um, took the skull exam back in 2020 and managed to pass. So check out his other videos and whatnot. I'm sure he'll be able to help you to pass your exams as well and hopefully get a scholarship, maybe even an outstanding. Who knows? The question that we're going through today involves quite a bit of algebra and a wee bit of geometry. Uh, but I don't think there's anything too difficult, but it's perhaps a wee bit of a long one. So let's get into it. Michael loves soup. His bowl can be bundled with a frustrum, which is essentially you've got a big cone minus a little cone gives you the frustrum and we are also given that the bottom radius is equal to 10 centimeters the top is 25 and our height as 15 centimeters we are also given the volume change over time for the soup which is 12 centimeter cubed per second and we want to know the rate that the radius of the soup surface is increasing when the soup is nine centimeters deep. Okay, so the rate of the soup's radius um, increasing over time, that's gonna be our dr over dt. So we want to find out dr over dt. We're also given dv dt, which is a uh, 12 centimeter cubed per second. So what we're gonna try to work out here is our uh, dr over dv. I once I said before, um, our frustrum is just our big cone minus our little cone. We've got our big cone here minus our little cone. That gives us our frustrum. I'm a pretty visual person, so there's going to be a lot of visuals in this video. The heads up. Then we've got our frustrum over here with all the information that's given to us. And over here, I've added in this green sort of circle, which is going to be the surface level of our soup. That's got a radius of R. And I've chosen the depth of the soup is going to be Y because why not? And we've got the distance from the tip of the would be cone to the bottom of the frustrum as X. So we're going to now try solve for X and we can use similar triangles over here. So what this is down here, a bit of a cross section through our cone. So this triangle here is essentially this bit here and this triangle is this bit of our cone or frustrum. Um, so using similar triangles, we know that R2 over R1 should be the same as H of 
plus x over x. So that's what this equation is here. And our x is unknown. Like I've said before, we're going to try work that out. Just a side note for this video, the stuff in blue is going to be what I'm kind of changing from line to line. So kind of just look at the blue stuff to follow through what I'm doing and what I'm changing. Hopefully they'll be able to help you guys out. So what I've done here is I've cross multiplied, then I've expanded the bracket, then I put the R1x to the other side to help collect like terms. Then I've factorized to get to here. And then I'm just dividing by R2 over R1 to get X by itself. And we're left with this beautiful equation. X is equal to all this. And now all we need to do is put in some numbers to this to find out what X is equal to. R1 is equal to 10. Our h is equal to 15, and our r2 is equal to 25, which I've got all in here to give us a final answer, or not final answer, but x being equal to 10 centimeters. From there, we're going to try work out the volume of our frustrum because we're trying to work out our dv dr. So in your formula sheet, you don't have an equation for the volume of a frustrum. However, you do have one for the volume of a cone, which is given right here on page four of the formula sheet. I put up a little photo for you. So as I said at the beginning of the video, the frustration is just a big cone minus a little cone. So that's pretty much what I've got here. Big cone minus a little cone to give us our frustration. Our big cone, which is this whole thing here, we've got the radius is R2 and the height is H plus X. Go up here, you can see X, H, that's going to be the total height of the cone. Then the little cone has radius of R1 and a height of X. So now all I'm doing for the volume of our frustrum is just plugging these in to the volume of our cone. So we see here our R now becomes R2 and our H now becomes H plus X. And then for our little cone, our R becomes R1 and our height becomes X. All just based off that. Hopefully that didn't confuse you guys too much. Uh, next up, I've noticed that the pi over 3 is a constant in both terms. So I've taken that out the front, which is why that's over here now. And we've still got this x term. But remember, we're trying to do dv dr. So we want more things in, I guess, radius and whatnot. So I'm going to take out this x, remembering that up here, we worked out that our x is equal to this. So all I'm doing in this line right here is plugging in what our x is equal to. This, all that mumbo jumbo, putting that into here. It looks a bit messy, but we'll sort through it. All I'm doing in, from this line to this line is adding that fraction together to the h. I'm then expanding the bracket to give us this, and then collecting the like terms, those cancel out, and I'm then uh, multiplying these things together, I guess expanding the bracket, R2 squared times R2, just gives you your R2 cubed. And from there, I've realized that these are constants in these terms. So I've just taken them out the front, which gives us a final equation for our frustrum as this. There's a decent amount, a decent amount of stuff. From here, we're going to now try to calculate what our y and r are going to be equal to. We're going to go back to our similar triangles. So once again, this is like a cross section of our cone and frustrum. And we know using similar triangles that our r2 over our h plus x should be the same as r over y plus x, which should be the same as r1 over x which is these equations over here. Then going down from there, we can see that I've just plugged in the numbers of what all these things are. Also, this is not to scale at all. Like that's 10 centimeters, that's 15 centimeters. My, my drawing skills, not there. I didn't do art, I did calculus. Um, anyways, going moving on, uh, we can take this and we can try solve for a little equation with R and Y. This is pretty simple math here, 15 plus 10, 25, 25 over 25, one. Um, that should all be pretty straightforward, I would definitely hope. 
we end up with r being equal to y plus 10. Now, if we remember the question, I'll go back up for you. We want the rate of the radius of the soup surface increasing when the soup is nine centimeters deep. So depth of soup is equal to nine centimeters. If we go back down to where we were, our y is the depth of our soup. So we want it when y is equal to nine centimeters, pretty much just that. We can plug y equals nine back into our equation that we've got right over here. We get r equals 10 plus nine, which is 19 centimeters. So we know we want dr dt when the radius is equal to 19 centimeters. Okay, now we're onto the last little legs of this question. We are now trying to get the volume of our soup. And the volume of our soup can still be modeled by a frustrum. So all we're doing is taking our frustrum volume equation that we worked out earlier, and we're just going to change it for the soup variables. Instead of our height being h, our height is now the depth of the soup, which is just y. So that's why the, our h changes to a y. Our r1 is still r1, and our r2, instead of being r2, is now just r. Those are the only sort of changes there. Um, from there, we just plug in that our R1 is equal to 10 centimeters, which is we've done from there to there. And remembering that we've just calculated up here that our R divided by Y plus 10 is equal to one, which we can rearrange to give us this. So we know that our Y over R minus 10 is just equal to one. We know anything times one is just itself with this essentially just disappears. And we're left with a V soup is equal to this. From here, we can differentiate, pull out our three to the front, three times all that. These just cancel out, three minus one, left with two. So we get pi r squared there, the minus a thousand, that's just a, a constant that's gonna disappear off into the void. Don't have to worry about that. Our dv dt, like we said at the start, 12 centimeters cubed per second. Let's go back up. Yeah, we can see here it fills this bowl at a rate of 12 centimeters cubed per second. So dv dt, nice, easy. It's given to us. Now we've finally got everything that we need to work out uh, dr over dt. So dv dt, as we just said, is 12 centimeters, and our dr over dv, we'll just flip that. So put it over one, and we end up with. 12 over pi r squared. Now remember, we want this when the radius is equal to 19 centimeters because that's when the depth of our soup is equal to nine centimeters. So all we gotta do now is just plug in um, our radius being equal to 19 centimeters. So 12 over pi times 19 squared gives us a final answer of 0.011 centimeters per second. And with that, we're done. We have solved the soup question. Thanks for all your time, guys, and watching. Hope you guys managed to learn something. And consider subscribing to the channel.